My last high school teacher was the great George Jansen. To say I loved him would be an understatement. He was one of the only white teachers who would teach black students in the pre-civil rights era. He had taught John Longo, my teacher that taught me in the house and, and said check out Herseth and Clifford Brown. Jansen was slightly paralyzed from a stroke he had suffered and could not use his right hand. And Tony just told me his father worked with Jansen. I didn't, I didn't even know that because of his paralysis. George Jansen taught me all of the cornet souls like Herbert Clark's Bride of the Waves and orchestral pieces like Mahler's Fifth Symphony. I was his last student on Saturday and all the younger kids would sit outside and listen to my lesson. One day, he very loudly threw me out for repeatedly coming in unprepared, not warmed up, after playing a funk gig all the night before. That was pure humiliation. Nothing worse than having to walk past a bunch of young kids that think you really can play, and they know you just got cussed out because they heard every word of it. This man was not supposed to drive at night, but he drove to my senior recital. That night, I played Charlie Parker's Donna Lee and the Hindemith Sonata, and what I learned that night was the importance of practicing everything you have to play all the way through without stopping. Because if you don't, <laughs> when it's time to do that, you won't be able to. <laughs> okay? Since that night, I always say, when you practice something, work on it, then always play it all the way through. My first ever trumpet teacher, John Fernandez, when I was six, came to my recital when I was a senior. Every time I saw Sweets Edison, great trumpeter, played in the Count Basie Orchestra that left Kansas City in the 30s, he was flirting with a woman. He was a master of the blues and the one-liner. He would always tell me, slow down. Damn, baby boy, you just played more notes than I played in my entire career. <laughs> and I've been playing since 1932. He played blues like Centerpiece and songs like I Wish I Knew. Ron Binko was the first trumpeter in the New Orleans Symphony Brass Quartet. My senior year in high school, we played about 40 gigs in elementary and middle schools. I got out of school for almost 40 days. My principal said, you can get out of school, but if you make anything less than an A, it's going to be a C or a D. We played pieces like the Cheatham Scherzo and Box. Contrapunctus 9. Before the first concert, Ron looked at me and said, are you sure you could keep your place in this Contrapunctus? I said, yeah, man, I got it. I got lost. <laughs> it was the first time I played with them. He started looking around like he showed me a lot of love. He said, eventually, this boy will be able to play. You need to concentrate, son. At 17, I attended Juilliard and studied with William Vacchiano. He had taught my teacher, George Jansen, and he had taught Bob Helmsley, who gave me that five-hour lesson. Mr. Vacchiano and I did not get along. We were always talking about stuff like black people and Italians and all we got in the a kind of thing about whether I was his best black trumpet player. We went back and forth. We had a hard time with each other. After about a year, I dropped out of school, a year and a half. But I called Mr. Vacchiano one day. I don't even know why I called him. I said, can I come to your home and see you? Because I want to get a lesson on transposition. I went to his house. When he answered the door in Queens, it was the first time I ever looked at him as if he was a human being, because I only knew him as Mr. Vacchiano. He told me to sit down. I sat down at a table, and we began to speak. He told me down the hall, is, my wife has been an invalid for a long time. And when she dies, I'm going to be alone. He said, now, you're going to be a great trumpet player. People will talk about you. But I'm going to tell you something that I want you to always remember. No matter how famous you get, no matter how much money you make, no matter how, how many other people think you're great, if you are unhappy in your internal life, you are not successful. You are living a not happy life. So the thing I want you to know is, look out for the people who are around you and make sure that everything around you 
has some love and some happiness. Now, this was not a man given to that type of talking. He always just called me Marcellus. It is a lesson that stays with me and has guided me many times when I wanted to strangle or kill my children. <laughs> I would think, I'm serious now. <laughs> I'm serious. It happened not too long ago. <laughs> I wanted to kill one for leaving his keys for the fourth time. And on my way from where I was in a cab, cussing him, I thought about Vagano. When I got there, I gave him a hug and said, man, it's just keys. His advice affected me in those ways all throughout my life, and it stays with me. I played with the New York Philharmonic, Haydn Trumpet Concerto. Mr. Vacchiano came to that concert. He waited till the end of everybody was shaking my hand and talking about we liked it. And he shook my hand, he said, Marcellus, you are my best student. So I couldn't believe it. I might not have really been his best student. It wasn't important. What was important that he remembered all of those things we would argue about. He would tell me about when some kids moved his book bag because he was Italian. I would say, what about being on a whole playground with people calling you nigga and you have to fight four or five of them? We would go back and forth. I learned a lot from him that helped me in my life that was not about those things that we argued about. For that, I'm forever grateful. I left Juilliard to play with Art Blakey. Art taught me to be for real and to play full out all the time, regardless of person, personal situation or gig conditions. We played pieces like Wayne Shorter's One by One and Bobby Watson's Full of Love. Art Blakey gave me the freedom to play and learn how to play on his bandstand. 